this is Chris Lee here with LPNN doing another special live interview. Today we're here with Dave Doyle, possible mayoral candidate. As a matter of fact, he's turning in his packet after this interview and he'll be an actual candidate, Dave Doyle, for the mayor of the city of Page. We're here, we're going to ask him some questions. I'm sure Lois will be primed up and ready to ask you questions. Those will come across <laughs> there, but we have some here as well. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Mario says, um, all right then. <laughs> Hi, Mario. Thanks for watching. Renee says, hello. Hello, Renee. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining the show. So I guess we'll just go ahead and uh, dive right into it. So how, how long have you been a resident of Page? I have been here for almost seven years now. Almost seven years. What do you do around here? Uh, I actually run all of the IT stuff over at the hospital. Okay, all right. What does that involve? Just working on all the stuff in the background? or? Oh, no, there's a, there's a whole lot. It's pretty much anything that's connected to our network um, that plugs into a wall for the most part. Okay. Uh, so computers, telephones, audiovisual, um, digital signage, uh, any communications. Okay, so all pretty much that. anything electronic is under your purview over there? Pretty much. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's see, I've got some questions we've thrown together here for you. Let's see. We'll start with some of the easy ones. We just talked about uh, about what you do. What have you done in the past? What did you do before you came to Page? I have actually been in IT for quite a while. Um, I did, uh, before moving over to the hospital, uh, I was actually an IT manager over at Amagiri. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, that's actually how I got here. Um, not the reason I'm here, but the way I got here. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, before that, I actually worked IT at a hospital in Page, at, uh, or not in Page, in Dallas at uh, Children's Medical Center. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, really, really rewarding. Um, and the reason I, as soon as I could get in on a, at the hospital, I decided I need to be back in healthcare. Okay. You, so you actually like the healthcare side of IT? Oh, yeah. Love yeah. it. A lot better than working out at the mega resorts? Well, it, <laughs> Honestly, I've worked for uh, an oil company. I've worked for uh, restaurant services. I've done lots of different retail versions of IT. Uh, healthcare, again, I just, there's something about it that I just really, really like. All right, well, I know how that goes. You find something you like and you try and stick to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Definitely. Although this is all new to me, so <laughs> I'm good. I'm really good at the IT side of things, but I've never done any of the broadcasting side of things. We had uh, uh, Councilman McNutt was in here, and he's like, "Wow, I really like your setup." I'm like, well, "I'm glad you like it, but it's what I could cobble together from what the parts I had laying around." So, <laughs> no, it's still a pretty good setup here. <laughs> it, it does the job for now. So. <laughs> All right, let's see. So you used to work at Amangiri. That that is interesting. For those of you that don't know, Amangiri is a is a really high end resort just north of Page in uh, in southern Utah. So it's a it's a pretty nice place out there. Well, let's see. All right. So what do you think of the current state of affairs right here in Page, Arizona? You know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. There's a lot of people that think one way, some the other way. You know, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of contention. What do you think of the current state of affairs going on right now in Page? I definitely think that there's a lot of conflict going on here. Um, there's a lot of it really is communication. How much do people actually know that's going on? Uh, how much of the details they understand? Uh, there's a lot to be said. Um, the broadcast that you had for the city council meeting that had over 1,500 views is, I mean, people didn't know what was being voted on. They didn't know mm -hmm. the details of it. Uh, there's a lot of documentation out there for it. I I think that uh, the city definitely needs to communicate more. We need to get together and come to a common goal. That makes sense. We have noticed that a lot too. One of the reasons I started uh, LPNN is to try and communicate with everybody and try and bring everyone together so that, you know, under one area where they can get all of their information so they, they know what's going on, they can make informed decisions and it's not just like, wait, how did that happen? You know, that's, that's kind of a big deal. We had some people that came in, you know, they were really concerned about this last meeting that we had. Um, there was uh, some land that was being talked about for someone down near the golf course, but they didn't understand what was going on. And we had no idea either. We actually talked to Councilman McNutt and he found out some information for us. 
And it ended up being completely innocuous and not that big of a deal, but the way it was coming across because there was so little information, it seemed kind of hinky. And in fact, it wasn't. So that, that is a huge deal around here is uh, trying to get the information out to everybody so they really know what's going on. <clears throat> um, let's see here. What else do we have? What is, the most, uh, what is the most important thing to you going forward from here? You were talking about communication. Well, if you do get elected mayor, what do you think is the most important thing going forward? Ooh, that's such a double-edged sword. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it, really, I think one of the biggest issues that we've got going on here is we need to define Paige's personality. Uh, personality is what draws people here for all reasons, whether it be to start your business, to live here, to work here, to visit here. Uh, it's you know having the right balance of retail, office, and residential, huge. Uh, what do you think the government, the local government, can do to try and help that with it, with, while staying in its, you know, in its bubble where it's supposed to be? What do you think that the city council or you as mayor would be able to do to bring businesses or bring contractors in for housing? Well, um, one of the things we can definitely do is incentivize. Okay. Uh, city council has the ability to bring in new businesses and say, "We can have you come here." I know we don't have the residential base. But we do have the uh, the tourist base okay. to make make it viable. Uh, we can offer them, you know, possibility of some tax incentives. Okay. Uh, the, there's there's land out there that we can we can afford to give up. We don't we don't have to. I know that we've got uh, one property up for sale uh, just around the corner here. Um, we're this is a city. Mm -hmm. We're not a landlord. We should not be taking buildings and renting them out, we need to sell those things out, collect the taxes on them. We need to bring in things here that are going to benefit not only the tourists, but our locals. Okay. All right. That's that's one of the big things a lot of people that live here are like, well, you need to start focusing on us, some, not just the tourism. I mean, tourism is a huge industry here, but you've got all the people that live here and we've had a lot of people coming in and they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? You know, and that, that's one of the things it seems like it's kind of canted one way and not the other with all the policies that have been laid out so far. What do you have to say about that? Well, I've, uh, I've actually found a wonderful uh, study in this map where people took the average cost of buying a house, mm -hmm. the average uh, salary that, were, that you would have, and then based on some other calculations, a percentage rate, 30-year mortgage, all of that, that uh, what you would have to make in order to be able to buy Okay. Uh, Arizona is one of the hardest places to buy a house. Period. Is that because of the actual wages versus how much things cost? Or? Correct. Okay. And Page is, I, I lived in a big metroplex. You mm -hmm. would think that a big city like Dallas would be something that would be more expensive to live in. It isn't. No, it's definitely it's, not. <laughs> this town costs more to live in than it does elsewhere. Yeah, and it's hard to find a job where you can make enough money to actually be able to do that. You know, you got people that have, you know, they've got one, two, three, four roommates sometimes yeah. where they're just trying to make ends meet and they're, you know, and they're living in something that they'd rather try and get a house, but they just can't afford it. Personal experience here I, at the hospital, I know we've lost healthcare professionals because they can't find a place to live. Oh, they can't afford sense. it. And... That's something that our community can't afford to have. We can't lose healthcare, and we can't lose uh, we can't lose people to. Well, there's a delicate balance. You can't have people run a business if they can't afford to live here. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. I, I had a, I had a couple of. Oh, so with that, um, I, I have kind of. It's it's not really a trick question, but I, <laughs> I'm going to quiz you a little bit. You said you've been here for seven years. Do you know? approximately how many square miles the city of Page is and how much developable land that we have here? Off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I know What's your that best when, guess? When I'm looking at, at that map that you have on the wall, mm -hmm. we have a large amount of undeveloped land. I'd say probably close to 40% of the Page proper is, or the, the city limits, mm -hmm. is not developed. Okay. So... Like I said, kind of a trick question because I know this. We actually did an article on it a while back. So you're looking at the map there on the wall. Well, everyone thinks that that's the page city limits. 
Mm-hmm. Did you know, in fact, that it goes all the way to the Utah border on both sides of 89, takes up most of Huawei, the whole chains area. It includes everything except for the little spot of Greenhaven right up there on the border. Yeah. yeah so it's, all, it's like 35 square miles we actually have. A lot of people think that it's just right here within city limits, but the city limits actually, they annexed it. I think it was back in 2010 and made it much, much larger. I know I see when I go out towards Black Sap, I see that Horseshoe Bend, near Horseshoe Bend, you see that sign that says Pay City Limits, and mm-hmm. I'm going, that's all this land we could use. It sure, it certainly is, yeah, and all the way along 98, all the way back towards Industrial, and then all the way up towards Lachi, it actually goes quite a bit past uh, the uh, transfer station, you know, the dump out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize that. Oh, apparently we have some questions here. I have some more as well, but uh, we have some questions. Let's see, let me scroll back here. Let's see, uh, Renee is asking, tell me why I should vote for you. What changes will you bring to the table? Well, uh, changes I can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are part of, obviously, the council if you're, if you're elected mayor, but you know you kind of have a little bit of a steerage going on there. You can point the direction. Well, I, most of us have the same views, the same places we want to go. The, when you say most of us, who do you mean? Uh, anybody I've heard who wants to run for city council at all. Okay. Everybody has a stance. Let's make page better. Okay. Um, I know that we do have a master plan. Uh, so some things are already mapped out. Uh, things that are, for me personally, that make me different. Uh, I'm, I'm a very passionate person. I, am, I, I tend to lean to one to two things. Either I really love it, I don't care. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with love and hate. There's a, pretty much the same thing, just opposite end. I'm, I could care less about it. Okay. Um, or I dislike it so much that it's not worth dealing with. Okay. Um, one of the things that I am very passionate about is I want other. I, I want to be able to have other people helped. Okay. That's why we had in, got back into healthcare. So, I you know I'm I'm willing to fight for what the city wants. I want to hear. I. I if you want to hear from the people here? I want to hear from the people. I, I want I want people to text me. I want them to call me on my cell phone and say, hey, this is something that we feel passionate about. You know, this group of people, this is what we want to see happen. Okay. Um, I'm not a polit- I don't identify with a political party because political parties have agendas. They do. They do. I, they certainly do. I like to think for myself and make my decisions and be able to look to the other side of the coin. I think that's something that I know my family tends to dislike about me <laughs> is that I will they'll bring up an argument and I won't I won't be stating my opinion on it but I'll I'll offer them what's devil's advocate. Absolutely, yes. I, you have to see both sides to really understand the problem. Now, we we always say that around here too. If you can't argue the other side, that means you don't understand what's going on on the other side. That means you don't you don't have a right for an opinion or to be able to argue. You need to know both sides absolutely and be able to formulate your own ideas based on that. A lot of people don't realize that. And uh, George Washington, in his farewell address, actually brought up about how a two party system was going to be the death of the country because it creates partisan politics. Everybody hates everybody, not because of what they think. But because it's the other guy, so they can point yeah. the finger at and everything. And, uh, well, we're kind of living it right now uh, countrywide and, well, a little bit on citywide as well. Yeah. <laughs> it can get kind of messy out there. All right, let's see what else we have here. Renee also asked, uh, what about affordable housing for the workforce? You need to take care of the tourists. Yeah, okay, so the workers that take care of the tourists, you know, the ones that are in the service mm-hmm. industry and all of that. What about affordable housing? They recently did, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, um, the housing survey from Michael Baker International. You know, they're trying to compile some information. What are your feelings on that? And if anything, what do you think the city council can or will do? Well, I we have all this undeveloped land. Mm-hmm. I think we can entice a developer to come in and start building something. Okay. Uh, this... Most people, whenever they try to compare what could Paige be like, what do we want to strive to be? A lot of people will say Sedona. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sedona is one of those places. They have a great tourist base. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful town. The difference between Paige and there is that they have Cottonwood. They people do. who work in Sedona live in Cottonwood. Because they can't afford to live exactly. in Sedona. Here, so we don't have that. We don't so we're have in the that middle option. of nowhere. <laughs> which, is, which is why we do need to zone some of these places. We need some, some land developed. We need to start making page affordable to live and work in. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, 
I mean, we can still offer tourists these three hundred and fifty thousand, one point five million dollar homes to come by or retirees to come there. We can have our VRBOs. We don't have to have all of them. I mean, we have passed regulations on the apartment complexes. Okay. Uh, it's it's just a matter of finding that perfect balance. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be. I, I really feel some of that has to do with this undeveloped land. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, let's see what else we have here. Uh, Lois is saying, uh, there have been a lot of complaints from locals and tourists about poor customer service and laziness throughout the area. What about working with the businesses to address these issues? Are there, do you have any suggestions for that? The, as far as the laziness, I think that's, that's really just, it's a matter of, uh, gratitude. Really, okay. I mean, nobody wants to work a thankless job. Sure. Incidentally, sure. today is waiter and waitress day. Oh, is it really? Yes. Well, there so you everybody are. should go out and appreciate your waiter or waitress. Um, right. Tell them thank you. They never expect that. They're always expecting the grumpy customer. <laughs> All right. Right. Uh, you know, same. If if we could employ that kind of feeling all the time and the people didn't have to feel like, well, I'm I'm making minimum wage to go home with my six other roommates. I can't really afford to have a good life outside of work, sleep, and that's it. Right. That's that's one. I I think a housing housing is definitely going to come into play there. As far as uh, you know, again, taking care of our locals is something. I would I'd love to see a bunch of businesses buy in on a locals discount. Okay. To where it's not I offered this one or I offered this one, but let's get a card out there that I can present with my check. And they're like, oh, I'll apply that discount to you. There's actually been a, a lot of times that that's been tried before, but it never really catches on. We do have some companies out there that offer local discounts. There's even hotels that offer locals as much as 10% off if you're a local, which is, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. How would you try and push that out there and try and get businesses to adopt something like that? Unfortunately, you can't force them to. Well, of course not. Of course but not. you can incentivize them. Okay. There's a lot of incentives that I think the city can offer to some of these places. The, uh, you know, assistance with their beautification. We can work towards, uh, you know, even taxes. I mean, everybody okay. complains about taxes. Uh, granted, they go to pay for our roads, but if we could, you know, well, if that's we a whole had, other contention yeah. point right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, no, it's, I, I think that the incentives are out there. It's it's really getting out to the business owners, talking to them, and saying, what would make you buy into this? I okay. mean, it's, it's not for me to so decide So you're willing that. to try and put tax dollars towards that to incentivize businesses? If we can incentivize the businesses and bring in businesses the same way, mm -hmm. I mean, it's very, very simple math. Uh, you have X amount of space mm -hmm. or X amount of businesses. If you doubled the amount of businesses here, you doubled the amount of taxes, you could afford to drop them to keep, you know, oh, equal or sense. slightly okay. better. All right. All right. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Harland. Harland is actually in New Mexico, but uh, he used to be a local here. He says, uh, we should do more local entertainment options, less tourist stuff. Page will always be here before and after the plant. So he's talking about uh, the shutdown of the plant. The, you know, yeah. It's supposed to be coming uh, next year. He's saying that we should do more things for locals and not necessarily all the stuff for tourists. What do you think about that? I, again, balance. balance. It's, there's, there's no one answer. You can't focus on any one. We do have to have tourists come here. Mm -hmm. That is, oh, that is, that's where our economy is moving the most too with the plant shutting down. Uh, and we want to keep quality of life for everybody who lives in Page. Okay. You can't, you can't just deny the tourists their entertainment and then they won't come <laughs> here or right. we can have them still flood here and have everybody in a bad mood. Well, I think that's one of the issues. A lot of people, a lot of tourists were not, you know, moving on from the local thing. Tourists come here and, uh, you know, more often than not, this is just a pass-through point because there's not a lot to do here. I mean, you've got Horseshoe Bend, you have Antelope Canyon, and you have the lake. A lot of tourists either don't know about it, that it's actually here in Page, or they just check that out really quick and they're gone. You know, or do you have any kind of plans on, well, maybe trying to make Page an actual destination versus a pass-through? It would be great for it to be a destination. I think that's part of developing the personality of Page. Okay. Is, you know, giving them a reason to come here, not just because it's a pass-through, but because this is a place that is beautiful. That I can spend hours out on the lake. Oh, absolutely. This is the best place to start. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's close enough that you can actually, like, stay here, make a day trip out to Zion. 
-hmm. You can go to our national parks. You can check out some things. That you, I mean, we've got tons of trails around here. One of my passions is getting out and hiking these. Oh, nice. uh, I found, you know, even recently, I'm still discovering things, uh, Birthday Arch. Uh, my brother-in-law is a hiking guide. And he started, He gives us random tips every now and then. Hey, you should go check this out. This is really cool. And we found things that I've never expected to find here. Really? Mm -hmm. well, that's always a good thing. That's, that's fun stuff right yeah. there. <laughs> let's see what else we have here. Uh, let's see. What about identifying another type of industry to address the possibility of NGS going offline and not being 100% dependent upon tourism, which is directly affected by the economy? Excellent. Um, it's, again, we have the we could bring in other other industries. I have actually seen businesses who shut down for one of my what I call the fishbowl effect. Mm -hmm. You can only grow as big as your fishbowl allows you. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So I feel like we have a two two walled fishbowl right now. One is based on our housing and the cost of living here. The other one, honestly, is uh, uh, information technology, the internet. Internet is just not where it needs to be here. Definitely um, not. But that has been a huge issue for years. Yes. Even bringing fiber across with SEC, it's still, we don't have, don't seem to have enough bandwidth to support what we would need to grow. Yeah, it's absolutely. That's, I mean, we're right at the limit already. So what would you suggest would be a solution to something like that? There's couple of possibilities. I know that we have the fiber coming across the Navajo Nation right now, mm -hmm. uh, sitting somewhere near Tuba City, if my memory comes to, or is, I'm recalling it correctly. Uh, there's also the possibility of working with ADOT, okay. um, Flagstaff, that whole 89 area. We could, if, if somehow, and this is just, a, needs a lot of research to do, uh, put into, into effect, getting that fiber trench from uh, Flagstaff up here mm -hmm. to Page, along 89, ADOT's going to buy into that because now once the trench is open, they have the ability to put in their call boxes, their cameras, their safety systems, and it brings us that that much needed bandwidth. Okay, all right, that makes sense. <clears throat> let's see if we have anything else going on here. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, Harlan's bringing up that the the Flexcrete plant uh, never really got off the ground. Uh, yep, that's that's true. Let's see. What are your thoughts of the current path the city has taken to mirror Page after Sedona? <laughs> we kind of mentioned that a little yeah. bit earlier. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, we're not Sedona. We don't have Cottonwood. We are literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we don't have the uh, the backup. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Uh, Okay. Promoting advertising. All right. So we're still. Oh, here we go. Let's see. More business uh, are good uh, or a good thing. Fostering our tourist economy is a good thing. How do you see the relationships or priorities with continuing to encourage business growth and tourism and with updating our infrastructure? Hmm. Multi part there. Yeah, it is a multi part. <laughs> go ahead and pick one and, uh, and uh, let us know what you think on that. Well, uh, again, our you know our relationships and relationships with you know encouraging other businesses, tourism, things like that to come here. Uh, this uh, this is going to be again touchy subject. Again, sure. this balance thing is one that I I have a I think a lot of people have a tough time with is figuring out what is exactly right for us. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to you know foster some of this stuff, we're going to need. Uh, we're, we're going to need to one hold people accountable. Okay. Uh, I think if we're going to bring more hotels here, why don't we, you know, make the hotels give them part of the responsibility of we need these other businesses. Okay. We need your investment into these other businesses. We're going to need more restaurants. Okay. Um, we're going to need more tourism places. I, I think you know something really fun if we could find someone who wanted to open a mini golf course. A mini golf course. Well, I mean, that's the, a big golf course. We well, have like one, one of the one with all the little obstacles oh, and yeah. things like. Why that? not? Okay. I mean, fun things to do. Uh, nightlife. That's now you're talking about telling. Uh, so so if a hotel comes in, are you, you're you're saying well you guys need to build like a theme park or a mini golf course? I mean, is that is that what you mean? I'm not saying that they need to uh, to build one, but we can we can institute saying do you, are you going to offer this 
will you buy into it? Can we get, I mean, these are major corporations. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. As some of them are affiliated with other restaurants. Okay. Uh, if, if you go to them and say, hey, you're bringing a hotel here, can you also bring a restaurant? We have the land for you. Okay. All you have to do is build it. All right. If you build it, they will come. Kind <laughs> of strategy. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Lois says, uh, you keep mentioning what is right for Paige. Whose ideas for Paige will you follow? Uh, that's the people of age. I mean, it's it's not for me. I don't have any personal agendas. I don't have any uh, anything that I'm trying to get done. Okay. Uh, other than serve the city of Page, and you know, you don't serve people. You don't you don't go into a restaurant and say, "Hey, um, I'd like this chicken, this broiled chicken." No, you want a steak. You don't say that. Okay. You t- you give them what they want, and if they want something special, you cater to that. Now. Again, within reason. You okay. can't say this one person or this one really loud group who may be really small, they may tell you, I want this, but you also then have to look back, and that's the point of city council, mayor, and various committees, is to say, okay, but for the good of everyone, okay, this is where we're going to go. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, let's see. Lois says, uh, what ideas do you have for addressing the lack of things for our youth to do? You mentioned the mini golf course. Uh, what, what other ideas do you have? Or um, how do you think the city council could ha- help with something like that? Well, we, we have a lot of land that, again, could be developed. This is a matter of bringing in those businesses or developing it for parks and recreation purposes. Okay. Uh, I know that there, uh, I've had some people tell me about this place that their kids go and they ride BMX bikes. Okay. It's a dirt trail. It's, uh, if we could, you know, just develop it a little, groom it, make it, you know, suitable for the youth to get out there and do some activity. Okay. Uh, well, they're, they're they're actually building a skate park that's also going to be for BMX bikes and so something like that. Correct. Okay. Um, but again, some people like a different a different style venue. Okay. I, I know there are kids out there who they really like their dirt bike. Mm-hmm. They want to be able to do that. Uh, I, there are tons of trails that we have. People go out on their quads all the time. Okay. I've been out on them myself. They're you know it's it's a beautiful area. It's fun to go out and just hang out there. Um, okay. If we could find some remote areas that are that people trail out to, uh, and then they they sit and have a picnic, it'd be great to make those more accessible or look better. Uh, one of the one of the colleges, I wish I could remember the name of the college uh, on the East Coast. They built the college with no sidewalks. Really? They waited for all the students to start there, and then they watched where the paths showed up. Oh, really? That's where they built the sidewalks. That's pretty interesting. That's yeah. one way to do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's. We have we have those paths out there. Let's find them and and make them accessible. Make them okay usable. So you you keep mentioning about incentivizing businesses. <clears throat> How do you propose to, I mean, will you personally be calling business and be like, you know, like say Red Robin, hey, Red Robin, do you want to come to Page? This is what we're willing to do for you. Or do you just wait for them to try and drop in your lap? Uh, this is this is something that can be done by myself. It could be done by the council as a whole. This is something the city, it, it can't be one person. It needs okay. to be the city behind it saying, so our, our leaders and representatives go to them and say, hey, we have this opportunity. Here's what we can do for you. Can you come to us? Okay, so you're actually going to reach out towards them and try and find things. Okay, absolutely. And you're also talking about uh, Paige's message, the you know branding, if you will. So we've had several attempts at branding before that have passed through the city council. Um, I believe one of them uh, is was Page America. I'm mm-hmm. sure you've heard that before. And then I believe the last one, uh, they hired a company to come in and do some rebranding. We haven't heard anything back from them. So um, what are your plans on, you know, if, if you do decide to do rebranding, how are you going to do it? And how are you going to make sure that something actually happens and it's not just some guy that, like, hey, give me some money, we'll figure it out, and then nothing happens? Well, I I mean, we do need some consultants to kind of give you the, the path to follow, mm-hmm. but I think we just need to follow up on it. Um, advertising. I, you know, I, I see advertising here all the time for going uh, – back to where I'm from, from Dallas, Mm -hmm. saying, you know, this is a great area. I've seen random advertising to go out to the East Coast. We kind of need to get out there. This is a beautiful place. It's worthy. 
is worthy of the advertising to bring the people here. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was, I was going to mention <clears throat> the state of Arizona has actually gone through an entire rebranding, trying to bring in even more tourism, and they've been working really well on that and pumping it out all over the place. So we just need something a little more specific for us up here in the north. If we need to get, I, I, well, I'll tell you, being here and as far away as we are, being the most rural area in almost all of America. In the, in the continental uh, states, actually, we are. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, it's hard or it's easy for people to forget that we're here. Mm -hmm. um, we need to definitely be in contact with our, our state tourism board. And okay. Say, hey, look, guys, don't forget us. I know that you want to have, you want to bring people to the state, but we're part of it too. Bring them here. Okay. Um, that makes sense. Um, let's see. Uh, Oh, I did. Uh, Lois says I missed a question from Harlan about city advertising. I missed that. Oh, well, we're getting more questions popping in here. We've got all kinds of stuff. Um, I don't see the question there, Lois. Can you copy and paste it for me? We've got a lot of stuff coming through here. <laughs> uh, while that's going on, let's see. Um, from Mega, you mentioned affordable housing. A lot of businesses are hurting not because of lack of customers, but from lack of employees. It's hard to have a workforce for restaurants when the cost of living is well beyond what a restaurant employee makes. Could you be more specific on your ideas for bringing more affordable housing to Page? We did cover some of that. I'm not sure if he caught that part of the interview. Um, go ahead and make sure you rewatch, Micah. Uh, we did talk about that a little bit, but do you have anything else that you'd like to add to that? Um, I don't really know that I can add too much more to that. I don't know if I can be any more specific about it. I do know that there's, I've been looking through the parcels that the city owns, the uh, the land that, that is available for development. It would be nice to bring in a housing developer and say, come bring this in here. You know, we can offer you this land. I mean, honestly, if we could get the land here, I think it'd be worth, or the people here to develop it and get the housing going. Um, I think it might even be worth it to give away some of this land. That, I, I mean, know. we're not using okay. it. Well, I understand we're not using it, but uh, I think there's actually a thing in there that says you can't give it away. You have to do fair market value at least. But maybe there's some other things you were thinking, some kind of incentives. Yeah, know? there's the, well, there's the property taxes that can be waived. We can we can find ways okay. to get people here. There, We have a multitude of, of possibilities, and not everybody's going to take the same one. It of may course, be that course. one gets this deal, one gets this deal, and you just... Okay. Now, how, how, how will we ensure that uh, we won't have any kind of uh, special interests or favoritism going on amongst, you know, with possibly the city council or you? Like, well, we'll, we'll give this guy a deal, but this guy, <laughs> we're going to charge him a lot extra because we can, we can make up for what's going on over here. Um, that's just plain honesty. I mean, it's, it's not in the best interest of us to give people special deals and you know except for the fact we're trying to get them here uh if if the person's willing to pay and not if they say i'll pay fair market value and that's it or they want to pay twice the amount that's on their company to do that okay we just want the point that page needs to have or the the point of the city council is to get them here we okay. need to make this affordable we need to zone it for affordable housing this cannot be Let's build the, the multi-million dollar homes and let's leave out the people who are going to support that. Okay. All right. That makes sense. <clears throat> uh, let's see what else we hear. So we're not ignoring you, Micah, but we did cover the housing thing earlier. So make sure you rewatch the video and uh, check out that segment. Um, let's see. <laughs> okay. That's just a conversation going on there. Um, let's see. Uh, will Page start advertising outside of the Grand Circle once again, like Pagosa Springs or Nationwide, perhaps, something along those lines? I think we kind of covered a little bit of that. You want to try and push it out as far as we can. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mike is, okay, yeah, we were just talking about that. Yes, yeah, so we were talking about it. So like I said, we're not ignoring you. Just make sure you check earlier in the video. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. This is actually a really big contention point here. You mentioned increasing Paige's voice. What about increasing the amount of water Paige is allotted by the state? Oh, and there it went. <laughs> um, will you address this in house? So a lot of the issues that we've been having recently, a lot of people want to grow Paige out, but we're like at our absolute maximum amount for water consumption. How do you plan to address that to make the city larger? 
Uh, that's honestly a question for a team of engineers. Um, it's we definitely need the water consumption. I, we've got. Uh, I mean, there, there's. I know that I read. I want to say a a report on the water tables that are local okay. here that we're not even using. Okay. Uh, that are untapped. Uh, that I, I think I actually read that because of sinkholes. Okay. Um, because the the water flow was causing these. Okay. Um, well, that's what, and that's what we're talking. We're not talking about like water. That's not, I mean, obviously there is water, but the 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 city itself, like the state says, this is how much water you're allotted, and you can't go past that. And we've already hit that limit. They are uh, like, for instance, PUE. You know, they're doing some reclamation stuff that actually made it so that 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 number is actually significantly higher than it was. But we're at that limit now as well. We actually have to get more allotment from the state before we can actually get more. Do you have? Well, any then we ideas? we need to lobby with the state. Okay. Um, it's open communication. Again, if we're going to ask the state to lobby for us to be a bigger tourist destination, or they want we want them to advertise they're going to have to understand that we need these resources as well. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. So this is uh, from, this is actually Councilman McNutt here. Yeah. He says, we live in a multicultural community. Will you work to partner? Oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will you work to partner with our neighbors, such as the Navajo Nation, to try to accomplish common goals? Any particular goals that you would like to focus on? Oh, absolutely. Um, we would definitely want to partner with, I mean, everything around us. Uh, we've got the National Park Services who I know we've got some, uh, we've got contracts set up with them for EMS uses, uh, back and forth. Uh, I would like to see better communication across uh, the Nav uh, Navajo Nation borders. Um, okay. I know that uh, one of our, and I can speak from, where I work is they're trying to, we're trying to make sure that we can cover, you know, have health coverage that extends to the Navajo Nation and being able to handle, uh, uh, we're working with Indian Health Services to try to get, uh, get better coverage for, or better financial coverage so that we can, uh, can treat these, uh, the people who need the help. Okay. Uh, I think the city can reach out in the same, same fashion. We, you know, if we could offer, you know, a good trade, uh, business-wise. I okay. know that there are plenty of. I love to go out to Lachi mm -hmm. and go to the vendors out there. They have some great food. That, they they have some great crafts. Uh, having some more of that here, and you know, offering it would be. I think it would help us out. It, it, it help define who Paige is and who we who we neighbor with, who is part of our community. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Um, let's see here. Make sure we don't run too far past your time here. What? What? what how much time do you have left? <laughs> uh, probably another fifteen minutes. All or right, so. another fifteen minutes. And if we if we still have more questions, we're gonna have to bring you in for part two. You know that. Right? That's fine. All right, all right. We'll hold you to that. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Uh, this is from Lois. She says, what about deals that ultimately end up being bad for the city in the long run? There have been deals in other small cities where the city winds up paying a company to come in, and because of the deal, the city does not receive any of the revenue the businesses bring in. Um, I would hope that we could, you know, stop <laughs> the bad deal before it starts. Okay. Uh, ultimately, if the, if the bad deal has gone through, uh, I can't really speak to anything that was has or been passed in the past however many years okay uh but that is definitely a concern that we should reevaluate again if we're going to define the personality of page we need to define what are good what's good for the community and what's not and if okay. these aren't then it's it's time to part ways okay you know, gracefully say goodbye all right that makes sense well let's see if we have anything else right off the, off the top here Oh, yes. Have you actually heard of that? Have you heard of Paolo Palooza? This is from Harland. He says, the city dropped the ball with Paolo Palooza. I'm not exactly sure what happened with that. Are you familiar with Paolo Palooza? I am not. So a while back, um, there was a company that was coming in, and they were doing like a music concert. Uh, and it was down at, uh, you know where the, the auditorium is? Well, not auditorium. It's a... Uh, oh, I, I, my mind is lost. But it, you know where Big Lake Trading Post is? Mm -hmm. So there's like a... 
an amphitheater. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. There's an amphitheater down there. And there was a guy that was coming in, and they were bringing in uh, all kinds of different musicians and stuff, and it was started being really big. Something happened with that. I'm not exactly sure what it was. We'd have to look into it. But uh, would you be try, maybe try and pull something like that in? Oh, that'd be great. I'd <clears throat> love to see uh, artistry. Um, I know a lot of people are very interested in various types of art, whether it be um, paintings, drawings, music, um, performing. Okay. Uh, growing the arts in Page would be definitely... Uh, a boost to us uh, okay. as you know both in education purposes and in tourism as well all right well let's see we have, whew, man these guys you guys are asking a lot of questions <laughs> here we're definitely gonna have to have a part two i think um let's see okay so that was paulo palooza uh, let's see all right well okay so renee brings up a good point where she says that uh that the city didn't drop the ball. It was becoming a drug fest, and the organizer was a joke, not the city. Like I said, I don't know a whole lot about what was going on. I know that it happened for like one or two years, and then nothing. And it had a lot of potential to do a lot of things, but if that was the issue, I mean, how, how would you try and focus on that to fix those problems so it would actually be something more useful? Oh, this would be something that, if drugs were the issue for this, then this is something that we may need to, uh, I may need to have a talk with the police chief about. Okay. Uh, I definitely need to schedule some time to talk to him. Uh, I'd like to know, you know, more about what they need, but especially for, for big events like this, do we need more funding for that? Is this something we need to reallocate to make these safe and enjoyable? I do believe this particular event was before his time, but he may be aware of what was going on from files or something like that in the past. So that would, it would be, definitely be worth looking yeah. into. All right. And then uh, <laughs> from Councilman McNutt, he says, uh, LPNN should host a debate in the future. It's in the works, Darby. We will try and get one out there. We'd like to get all of the potential candidates together at one time ask you guys a bunch of questions, do a bunch of debates, and, uh, well, that's something we'll definitely have to work on. So, <laughs> it is in the works, though. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Harlan says, yes, the great page debate. I think that would, be a, that would be pretty beneficial, I think, for everyone so that they could hear what everyone's different opinions and ideas uh, of things would be. Uh, let's see. <laughs> From Teresa. All right, well, since you only have a few minutes left, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll get some more questions together for you that we've pulled out of the comments. We'll have people email us uh, any more questions. If you guys have any other questions, email them to lakepowellnews at gmail.com, and we'll definitely pull Dave in here for another interview. Absolutely. So uh, we do appreciate you coming in today and uh, answering our questions and getting put in the hot seat by our audience over here. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, like I said, we do appreciate that. And uh, thank all you guys out there for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and share this post so that we can bring more debates, more questions, and all kinds of other news to you in real time. We'll catch you guys. Oh, do you I have some? Actually, I right. need to add to this since sure. we are talking about elections. If you have not registered to vote, you need to get out there and register. The deadline is July 30th. I, I am not sure. I'd have to look. I think we have it on a calendar. It's either June or July 30th, but it's do it sooner rather than later. We really, I'd like to have a bigger turnout than we've had ever. You know, if, I agree with you. Uh, we, we were actually talking about this the other day when you came in and we were mm -hmm. setting up this interview. Um, I believe there was only a little over 500 people that voted in our last election. Yeah. So, you know, you need to get out there, you need to register to vote, but you also need to be informed to vote. Don't just guess. So make sure you, you know, you look up the facts, you find out what's going on, you talk to the candidates or you listen to these interviews, find out exactly what it is that's going on, and then make sure you vote. It's very, very important for not just you, but the future of the whole town. So that's a big one. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we have anything else here. All right. So... Go ahead and send your questions into lakepowellnews.com, or I'm sorry, lakepowellnews at gmail.com, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Let's see if I can find the right button today. Ah, <laughs> we can do it. There it is.